Peace and Pan-Africanism, brothers and sisters. Peace and Pan-Africanism, brothers and sisters. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Happy Kwanzaa, day four. Good Garvey Day to the Queens. Good Garvey Day to the Kings. Good Garvey Day to the elders. Good Garvey Day to the youth, to the babies, to the activists, to the revolutionaries, to the mothers, to the fathers, to the scientists, the scholars, the organizers, the nation builders. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde, coming to you with a brief message. I'm not going to keep you more than 30 minutes. I'm not going to keep you more than 30 minutes. I'm simulcasting on the Black-owned social media app fan base, and I am on my Facebook page, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. I am simulcasting on the Black-owned social media app fan base, and I am on my Facebook page, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. I just want to talk to you about my experience on the Clubhouse social media app. As many of you know, I held my very first Clubhouse conversation last week to deal with the Black Parent Know Your School Rights teleconference. So I used Clubhouse for the first time to host my Black Parent teleconference. That was on Christmas Day, December the 25th. So I guess that wasn't last week. That was just a few days ago, Christmas Day. And then we had a Clubhouse conversation the first night of Kwanzaa on healing the relationship between American Africans and continental Africans. And then the second night of Kwanzaa, we had another conversation on, let's go beyond the snow bunny crisis. How can we heal black love between the black man and the black woman? Let's go beyond the snow bunny crisis. How can we heal black love between the black man and the black woman? I wanna give you my impressions on both of those conversations. I want to give you my impressions on both of those conversations. And then I want to briefly talk about the next two conversations. There was no conversation last night because I needed to rest. There was no conversation last night because I needed to rest. Rest in peace to my Garvey elder, Baba Tunji Balagoon. He passed away. He joined the ancestors. I was in Baltimore yesterday. Shout out to Black Baltimore. I was in Baltimore yesterday for his homegoing ceremony. He was one of my last remaining Garvey elders with whom I had a close personal relationship with. I'm down to one Garvey elder. I'm down to one, might be more than one, but only one I can think of right now. And that's Baba Mensa of the Detroit UNIA ACL division of which I am a member. So rest in peace to Baba Tunji, I will miss you. Looking forward to you joining the ancestor warriors on the other side of this earth realm on the spirit plane. And I look forward to you making a healthy transition to the land of the Egun and then coming back down to earth to help us fight white supremacy and liberate African people. Rest in peace to the Garveyite, to the Garveyite, the Pan-Africanist, Elder Baba Tunji Balagoon. Tonight, we're going to have a very serious conversation on Clubhouse. Tonight, we're going to have a very serious conversation on Clubhouse. Tonight, we're going to talk about a topic that black people don't like to talk about. Many of us are uncomfortable with it. Many of us are insecure about it. Many of us are guilty of it. Many of us have been victimized by it. And I'm going to talk about it. Because my job as a revolutionary psychologist, my job as a revolutionary organizer, my job, my responsibility as the number one personality in the global black consciousness and pan-African movement, my job is to force conversations that a lot of us don't want to talk about. My job is to force the conversations that a lot of us don't want to talk about. So tonight at nine o'clock on Clubhouse, the handle is at Dr. Umar Ifatunde tonight on Clubhouse. The handle is Dr. Umar Ifatunde. We're going to talk about light skin supremacy, dark skin supremacy, mixed race supremacy. That's right. 
we're going to talk about being too dark as an African. We're going to talk about being too light as an African. We're going to talk about not being black enough because your mother is white or your father is white. We're going to talk about skin color prejudice in the African community. We're going to talk about skin color prejudice in the African community, and I don't want none of you to hold back. Be respectful with your comments, but I don't want you to hold back. Did you grow up in a family where you was too dark? Where your aunts and uncles always chose your light-skinned brothers and sisters or your light-skinned cousins? And you always seemed to not be around when they went out? Do you remember your grandmother looking at the ears of the newborn grandchildren to see how black they were behind the ears to see if this would be a dark-skinned grandchild or a light-skinned grandchild? Did you ever have a parent who made a prejudiced comment about your skin color? I remember my biological father. I remember as plain as day. We were driving in the car one day with my biological father, who happens to be a light-skinned black man with green eyes. I remember him asked me in the car, why was I so dark? I remember that. I was about, I don't know, elementary school. But my father asked me, why was I so dark? He asked us, my mother's children, why did y'all have to be so dark? So I know that there's light skin supremacy in our community. There's also dark skin supremacy. There are Africans who will reject. There are Africans who will reject Africans if they not dark enough. We got a dark skin supremacy. We got folks who say, if you're not as black as me, you ain't worthy to be called an African. We got to talk about this conversation. The most honorable Marcus Garvey, the most honorable Marcus Garvey said, the prejudice within the African race exceeds the prejudice directed towards the African race. Would you agree with that? Do you agree with Mosiah Garvey? Do you agree with the Honorable Marcus Garvey when he said the prejudice amongst African people, the prejudice we have amongst us is worse than the prejudice directed towards us by outside groups? Would you agree? I would agree. I would agree. I think we are more petty with our skin color issues within the race than we are than other people. Because for white folks, you all black. Chinese, you all black. No matter if you're mixed race, light skin, brown skin, butter almond, butter pecan, cinnamon, nutmeg, sweet brown sugar, honey, peanut butter, you're all the same to the Chinese. You're all the same to the Arabs. You're all the same to the Mexicans. You're all the same to the European Jews. You're all the same to the Anglo-Saxons. But when we get behind closed doors, we start splitting the race up. We start looking at hair color. We start looking at African features. I know for a fact that a lot of light-skinned children have been mistreated because they were light. Working in the schools, working in the schools, I can remember light-skinned girls being jumped and beat up elementary school, middle school, high school. This is as a school psychologist, my 25 years in this work. The light-skinned girls were always the ones getting beat up after school. You know why? Because the black boys were more interested in the light-skinned girls than the dark-skinned girls. And why were the black boys, fifth grade, sixth grade, more interested in the light-skinned little girls than the black girls? You know why? Because their mothers, that's right, black woman. That's right, black woman. That's right. The, the non-verbal messages that black mothers and fathers send to their sons about black beauty indoctrinates them to believe that the light-skinned girls are prettier. And since the light-skinned girls are prettier, the light-skinned girls had to get their asses beat. The light-skinned girls had to suffer the punishment 
for a black community that teaches its sons that beauty is based on skin tone. The black mother, the black father have taught the black boy that beauty is based on pigmentation. Beauty is based on melanin. This is what we taught and we still teach it. And if you're going to argue that we don't teach it, how does a third grade boy how does he know at third grade, second grade, dark skin is ugly and light skin is pretty? And no disrespect to the hip hop community. No disrespect to the hip hop community. But if we are going to be honest, Sean Carter, Jay-Z, I'm a fan. But Mr. Carter, and I hope this doesn't stop you from donating to the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, but... Growing up listening to hip hop, Jay-Z has had a lot of very negative comments to make about dark skinned women. I don't think it's a coincidence that his wife, Queen Beyonce, who we love and respect, is light skinned because all he talked about in his rap music was wavy, light skinned women. And when he talked about dark skinned women, he would call them um fum fu and everything else. Little Wayne. I just heard Chris Brown, and I like Chris Brown. I think he's one of the most talented black men of the 21st century. But I just heard about Chris Brown making negative conversations, negative comments about dark-skinned women. I see NFL players on boats with mixed-race and light-skinned babies. Last year, somebody sent me a video clip of NFL players with their light-skinned babies saying, if your children are not this light, you ain't winning. This is what they said. If your children are not this light, you ain't winning. So tonight, brothers and sisters, tonight on my clubhouse, we're going to have a positive family. We are family. Africans in Africa, Africans in America, Africans in Canada, Africans in Europe, Africans in Asia, Australia, the South Pacific, Central and South America, the Caribbean. We are family and we're having a family conversation tonight on Clubhouse. We're going to have a family conversation. And then some of you, some of you don't even know that you practice skin color prejudice. Some of you don't even know. Some of you are not aware of your skin color prejudice. Some of you are stone cold dark skin supremacists and you don't even know it. Some of you are stone cold light skin supremacists and you don't even know it. Some of you are stone cold mixed race African supremacists. And I've seen a lot of mixed race Africans get mistreated. I see that all the time. I see mixed race Africans get treated all the time. I don't know who got it. I don't know who has it the worst. The mixed race African, the light skin African, or the dark skin African. The only people who safe are the brown skin Africans. If you ain't brown, you might belong to a marginalized, a marginalized section of the African race. If you are not brown skin, you probably have been victimized. If you're too light, I know you've been victimized. I don't know of a super light, bright African, not mixed race, not even mixed race. Both parents are black but they happen to come out super light bright. I don't know one who have not been psychologically traumatized by black people. I don't know of a dark skin African, especially women, especially women. I don't know of a dark skin African woman who hasn't been traumatized. I don't know of a biracial mixed race African who hasn't been traumatized. How can we raise our children? How can we heal this with the babies? If we still practice it ourselves, I got to hold black women accountable. I got to hold black women accountable because I hear black women say all the time. I hear black women say all the time, I only like dark skinned men. I hear sisters say all the time, I only Date dark skin. I'm only attracted to dark skin. I don't like light skin men. Well, let me ask you a question, sisters. Let me ask you a question, sisters. If you only date dark skin men, 
Let me ask you a question, sisters. We're going to talk about this tonight in Clubhouse. And don't be no cowards. Don't be no cowards now. I want you to join in and let your voice be heard tonight. But let me ask my sisters this. If you're only going to date a dark-skinned man, if a black woman is only going to date a dark-skinned man, how can you get mad at brothers for saying they only want light-skinned, wavy-haired black girls? Is that not a contradiction? Is it not a contradiction for a black woman to say, I only want a dark-skinned man, but get mad at black men who only want light-skinned women? You cannot play both sides of the fence. If black women want black men to stop putting light-skinned sisters on a pedestal, you need to stop putting dark-skinned men on a pedestal. All black men are worthy of your attention, worthy of your honor, worthy of your love and support. And brothers... We are out of control with the light and the mixed race. Most scholars in the black conscious community have light-skinned women. You're not going to convince me that that is a coincidence. Most scholars, elders or fake woke YouTubians, most scholars in the conscious community, whether they be elders or fake woke YouTubians, have light-skinned women. Do you want me to believe that there's not enough dark-skinned women to go around? Or are we deliberately selecting out for skin color even when we claim to be woke? Do you want me to believe, black brothers? Do you want me to believe, black brothers, that it is purely a coincidence that so many of us who claim to be woke so many of us who claim to be conscious, is it a coincidence that so many of us end up with the lightest women you can possibly find? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Is it a coincidence that Michael Jordan married Juanita? Black woman. Black woman divorced her and ran to a white Cuban. Was that a coincidence? Dave Chappelle, Chinese woman. Now, I know we're getting into the interracial. I don't want to get into interracial relationships. We want to stay with skin color tonight. Skin color tonight. What about when you hear black people say, oh, she has pretty eyes. One light-skinned black girl in a sea of chocolate. One light-skinned black girl in a sea of chocolate. One light-skinned black girl in a sea of chocolate with green eyes. And the black people will fawn all over her European eye color. When you tell her her eyes are so pretty, what are you telling all the other black girls with brown eyes? When you tell the one light-skinned girl that she's so beautiful, what are you saying to all the chocolate girls around her? And I do not want to demonize light skin. Because I recognize our light-skinned brothers and sisters are often assumed to be bougie and think they're better even when they're not. Some of the best brothers and sisters I've struggled with were light-skinned. Some of the best brothers and sisters I've struggled with were light-skinned. Some had green eyes, blue eyes, hazel eyes. Some were just light-skinned. Some were mixed race. So I understand. I understand. I overstand. But I also see when a dark-skinned woman walks into a room with light-skinned and brown-skinned queens. I've, because I'm a social scientist. I'm trained to observe human behavior. I see when a dark-skinned sister, a richly melanated sister, who is the closest thing to God in this universe... The black chocolate woman is the closest thing to God because she is the undiluted original queen of this galaxy. But when she walks into a room with brown skinned sisters and light skinned sisters, I can see how uncomfortable a lot of dark skinned women get. And I can see how sometimes the light skinned sisters will give each other an eye. I've been told by dark skinned women that they can't even hang in certain social circles because these little cliques, these little cliques that black women live in, these cliques, 
Some cliques don't allow dark skin. And if we want to be honest to my sorority sisters, who I love you, I love my Zetas. I love my AKAs. I love my Deltas. I love my Sigma Gamma Rose. I love my Eastern Stars. But let's be honest. Let's be honest. The black Greek sorority in fraternity, and I respect them all. Kappas, Qs, Sigmas, Alphas, Iotas, Grooves. I love all the brothers. I love all the sisters. Shout out to all the black fraternities and sororities. But are we going to sit here and act like the black fraternities, the divine nine? We cannot sit here and act like the divine nine did not help to institutionalize skin color worship in the black community. We cannot sit here and act like the divine nine black Greek fraternities and sororities did not help to institutionalize skin color worship in the black community. And some of them still do. And some of them still do. When I travel to the different black colleges, when I travel to the different white colleges, when I travel to the different black colleges, when I travel to the different white colleges, I am still told by undergrads in the 21st century, 400 years later, I'm still told by undergraduate Africans, Doc, I can't join that fraternity. I'm too dark. I can't join that fraternity. I'm too light. I can't join that fraternity. I'm too dark. I can't join that fraternity. I'm too light. I can't join that sorority. I'm too dark. I can't join that sorority. I'm too light. So tonight on Clubhouse, we're going to expose it. We can't heal. We can't heal unless we go into the uncomfortable spaces of the global African reality. We can't heal if we don't deal with the issues that affect us. I'm going to bust the door open because I'm Ogun, brothers and sisters. I'm Ogun. I got to kick the door open. Ogun. I got to kick. I'm cutting all the self-hate. I'm cutting all the self-hate out of your heart. I'm going to make you destroy the inner cracker. I'm going to make you crucify the inner coon. That's what revolutionary Pan-Africanism is. That's what Pan-African nationalism is. It is all Africans for all Africans. We rise together or we don't rise at all. I want a unified race. I want a United States of Pan-Africanism. I want a United States of Pan-Africanism. And we got to deal with the skin color issues. Why our Jamaican brothers and sisters, our Senegalese brothers and sisters, our Haitian brothers and sisters, skin bleaching like it's going out of style. Black folks are out there getting surgeries to bleaching their skin up. Skin color, light skin supremacy, dark skin supremacy. I once stopped dating a sister. I once stopped dating a sister because she was a light skin supremacist. I didn't know that at first. But every time we got around dark skin Africans, she had something negative to say. Every, I'm like, what's going on with you? She didn't even realize it. Every time we got around some dark skin African brothers, and she had something to say. What's wrong with you? I had a dark skinned sister tell me that light skinned women are nasty. I had a dark skinned sister tell me that, you know, them light skinned women, they not clean, Dr. Umar. Light skinned sisters don't clean their bodies the way dark skins. Where the hell do y'all get this? Where do you get this from? Who told you light skinned women are dirty? Who? Where, I've had light-skinned brothers come around me and say, Doc, you might accept me, but I'm telling you right now, the dark-skinned dudes are not going to like me because of my skin color. They think I'm going to get all the women because I'm light-skinned. These are things I hear. I hear this stuff now, brothers and sisters. I'm not talking old stuff. We got to get over this. 
we are raising our children like this. Y'all remember Spike Lee school days? Y'all remember Spike Lee's school days movie about the light skin, the dark skin? And let me say this. Everybody's a victim and everybody's a perpetrator. Dark skinned Africans are just as guilty of perpetuating skin color worship as they are victims. Light skinned Africans are just as guilty of perpetuating skin color worship as much as you are a victim. Now, on my Instagram post, I want to say this. Light skinned Africans, don't be disingenuous about this conversation. Because I'm seeing a lot of light skinned Africans say things like, I have never seen a light skin privilege. Now, I would agree with you. I don't think your light skin privilege is as great as is presumed. I don't think light skin privilege is as great as it has been presumed to be. I think light skin privilege is exaggerated, especially in the 21st century. I would agree, but I would totally disagree with you. And I would have to call you disingenuous if you're going to sit here and tell me that you do not notice any differences at all in the way you are received as compared to dark skinned Africans. You're not going to tell me you don't notice that the hip hop community is a light skinned supremacy community. You're not going to tell me you don't notice that our black models are overwhelmingly light. You're not going to sit here and tell me you don't notice that dark skinned Africans are often overlooked for roles in film and in theater and even in the black community with our sororities and organizations and even our elected officials are overwhelmingly light skinned. So even when we separate white supremacy, even when we step out of the white institution and just look purely at the black community, you're not going to tell me that you do not experience at least a degree of light skin privilege. If you're going to say that, I'm going to have to accuse you of being a little disingenuous, a little disingenuous, just a little. But I agree, light-skinned Africans are victimized as much as dark-skinned, especially the little girls. I don't know who has it worse, a chocolate princess or a light-skinned princess. I don't know who has it worse because the chocolate princesses, they don't get beat up, but they get verbally assaulted their entire school career. The little chocolate girls don't get beat up, but they get verbally assaulted. They get called African booty scratches. You're black and you're ugly and don't let them have natural hair. Don't let them have natural hair. Don't let them have natural hair. So the dark skinned girls are verbally abused. The light skinned girls are physically abused. I said the dark skinned girls are verbally abused and the light skinned girls are physically abused, which takes me to the brown paper bag community, which takes me to the brown paper bag community. And for tonight's conversation on Clubhouse, we're putting black people in three groups. For the purposes of tonight's Clubhouse conversation, there are three groups. Dark-skinned Africans, light-skinned Africans, brown skin, dark brown light. Let me describe. This is the definition we're using because when you call in tonight on my clubhouse at nine, when I bring you on stage, I need you to introduce yourself with your location. Are you American African? Are you a continental African? Are you calling from Ghana, Jamaica, West Philly, Oakland, Chicago, Detroit, Atlanta, D.C., Baltimore, Jackson, Mississippi, Little Rock, Arkansas, Des Moines, Iowa, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Are you joining us from Birmingham, England, Luton, Wolverhampton, Manchester, Paris, Austria, Germany? Are you dialing in from South Africa, from Liberia, from the Congo? Are you joining us from the Mexican African community or the Brazilian African community? You have to tell me where you're at. And then you have to tell me what your skin color is. For example, this is Dr. Umar, North Philly, dark skin African. This is Dr. Umar, West Philly, light skin African. 
This is Dr. Umar, South Philly, brown skin African, so I can understand your frame of reference, so the community can understand your frame of reference. For the purposes of tonight's conversation on Clubhouse, a light skin African, this is the definition, a light skin African is a lemon colored to pale colored African. These are the light brights. You must be light bright to lemon. If you are yellow to pale, you are a light skin African. If you are yellow to pale, you are a light skin African. If you can pass the brown paper bag test, but you are not yet yellow, if you can pass the brown paper bag test, if we hold up a brown paper bag to your face, if we hold up a brown paper bag, as you can see, if we hold up the brown paper bag, if you are this color or lighter, but not yet yellow, if you are this color or lighter, but not yet yellow, you are a brown African, brown skin. If you are this color, but not yet yellow, brown skin. If you are yellow to pale, light skin. And if you cannot pass the brown paper bag test, you are dark skin. That's how we are delineating for tonight's conversation. We want to expose it, destroy skin color prejudice in the black community, and unite. Let us honor all the colors of the African rainbow. Let us respect all the colors of the African rainbow. Let us see as beautiful all the colors of the African rainbow. I've had black men tell me that their mothers or fathers told them that the woman they wanted to marry. I've had dark skinned Africans and light skinned Africans tell me that they brought women home or men home to meet their parents. And after the meeting, their parents told them she's too light for this family or she's too dark for this family. He's too light for this family. He's too dark for this family. We literally got families who worship light skin and don't want nothing dark in the bloodline. We got families who worship black skin and don't want nothing yellow in the bloodline. We got families who worship brown skin and don't want anything black or yellow in the bloodline. Was Marcus Garvey correct? Was the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey correct when he said the prejudice within the African family is worse than the prejudice directed at the African family? Was Garvey correct when he said the prejudice within the African family is worse than the prejudice directed at the African family? Brothers and sisters, we have to stop it. No true Pan-Africanist can be a light-skinned supremacist. No true Pan-Africanist can be a brown-skinned supremacist. No true Pan-Africanist can be a dark-skinned supremacist. The first color on the flag is red because it is the blood that makes you a member of this African family. The first color on the flag is red because it is the blood that makes you a member of this African family. And then we got to have a conversation with our mixed race Africans. Are y'all really down for the struggle? Or are you only black when it suits you? I got some mixed race Africans who are darker than non-mixed Africans. I know mixed race Africans who are darker than some light-skinned Africans. But yet you have a problem with them because they got a white mother or white father, they're not responsible for how they got here. They're not responsible for how they got here. They're not responsible for how they got here. And don't say we make too much of a deal out of skin color. I agree that we do. But don't use that as an excuse to not have the conversation. Because what I find is a lot of us are insecure. A lot of us are guilty of skin color worship. 
guilty of skin color worship. And we don't want to have the conversation because we might inadvertently expose our subconscious beliefs. See, a lot of us don't want to talk about it because you're guilty of it. A lot of us don't want to talk about it because we're guilty of it. And you don't want to speak on it because you might inadvertently let out a subconscious prejudice comment against another group of African people. We will not be using the word mulatto on tonight's conversation. Mixed race African, I will accept biracial if you want. Mixed race African is more appropriate. You will not call nobody a mulatto or you will be thrown off of my club. Why? Why doesn't Dr. Umar want Africans calling mixed race Africans mulattoes? The reason I don't want us using the word mulatto, the word mulatto is a derogatory term, it's no better than nigger. The word mulatto is a derogatory term, it's no better than the N-word. It's no better than the N-word. When you call an African a mulatto, you're basically calling him a mixed race dog. You're calling him or her a mutt. We will not be using the word mulatto. And let me say this as we get closer to the grand opening of FDMG. Let me say this as we get closer to the grand opening of FDMG. If you ever disrespect a light-skinned African on my campus... If you ever disrespect a brown skin African on my campus, if you ever disrespect a mixed race African on my campus, you will never be allowed on that campus again. The Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy is a pan-African universe. The Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is a pan-African universe. All Africans are welcomed. Whether they have one black parent or two, whether they be blue, black, purple or light, bright, whether they are mixed race or all blooded African, all Africans are comfortable at FDMG. And if you come there and you try to introduce your little petty prejudices and your petty biases, you want to discriminate, your ass will be entered into the book of Negroes. In the book of Negroes, I don't care what color you are. In the book of Negroes, I don't care what skin tone you have. Heaven on earth will be practiced at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. We are one people. We are one community. We are one race. We are one family. We are one people. We are one community. We are one race. We are one family. But tonight, Tell the truth of how you feel. If your mother and father raised you to worship skin color, say that. If you hate yourself for being light-skinned because of how you've been treated by other black folks, say that. If you are a mixed-race African and you don't feel comfortable coming to the Dr. Umar lecture because black people look at you like you don't belong, say that. Tonight, we will heal from this womb that white supremacy put in us known as skin color prejudice. Tonight, we destroy light skin supremacy once and for all. Tonight, we destroy black skin supremacy once and for all. Tonight, we destroy biracial bias and discrimination once and for all. We're going to expose the hypocrisy and the pain of our mixed race Africans. We're going to expose and destroy the hypocrisy and the pain of the dark-skinned African community. We're going to expose the hypocrisy and the pain of the light-skinned African community. We're going to expose the hypocrisy and the pain of the brown-skinned African community. With that being said, with that being said, Tonight's conversation is about skin color prejudice within the African race. Tomorrow's conversation is about the LGBTQ. That's right. That's right. That's right. Black LGBTQ, you have had a lot to say about me through the years. Black gays, black lesbians, black bisexuals, transgenders, queers, intersexuals, asexuals, Tomorrow night, if you are black and gay and you have a problem with heterosexual black men and women, 
If you have a problem with our opinions of you, tomorrow we are giving you a safe forum to express yourself. Now, somebody asked me, Dr. Umar, why is tomorrow's conversation not about whether or not we agree with homosexuality? The reason tomorrow's conversation is not about whether we agree with homosexuality or not is because I think that conversation would cause more wounds and more pain. Because if you don't agree with homosexuality and I do not, it's nothing else need to be said. I don't agree with it. I don't support same-sex marriage. I don't. I do not agree with transgenderism. I don't. But I can still respect the transgendered brother. I can still respect my lesbian sister. I can still affirm the humanity of the homosexual black man. See, I can disagree with you and not hate you. And one of the contradictions of black LGBTQ that we're going to talk about tomorrow is why is it when heterosexuals don't agree with gay life, we are automatically agents of the devil. Just because I disagree with you, why does that make me your enemy? Just because I don't agree with you, why do you have to call me names? Why is black masculinity automatically toxic because we don't agree with gay life? Let's talk about it tomorrow. And for the heterosexuals out there, for the heterosexual Africans, if you know of black LGBTQs who have a problem with Dr. Umar and they don't call in tomorrow, they a bunch of hypocrites. Tell your gay uncle, your gay cousin, your gay brother, your gay sister, your gay niece, your gay nephew, your bisexual, your transgender friends and co-workers. Y'all been talking smack behind Dr. Umar's back for a whole generation. For 20 years, y'all been talking smack about Dr. Umar. He's given you the opportunity in a respectful, safe place to air your grievance. Tomorrow's conversation is not about whether you agree. Tomorrow's conversation is about whether or not the black LGBTQ. Tomorrow's conversation is about whether or not the black LGBTQ is supportive of the black community or are they being used by the white power structure? What is the agenda of the black LGBT community? We wanna know, educate us black LGBTs. I'm calling you out to educate the heterosexual community. What exactly do y'all stand for? What are your goals and objectives? Do you only care about black people who are gay? Because we don't never see y'all. I'm just speaking from me and you can correct me tomorrow night. I don't see black gays when we're fighting police brutality unless they fight it as black gays. I don't see black gays standing with us when we're dealing with gentrification unless y'all do it as black gays. In other words, whenever y'all do something, y'all have to do it under your rainbow flag. And for me, it is a contradiction. It is for me... It is a contradiction. For me, it is a contradiction. If you're gay and black, but the only way you can do anything for black people is by waving your flag. Because if you notice, LGBTQ, y'all tend to pull yourselves out and separate yourself from the rest of us. Y'all do. You're a privileged group within black America, but you try to act like you're not privileged. I believe there is a gay black privilege. If I'm wrong, tell me tomorrow night. I want to ask you guys some questions. I have some questions for LGBTQ, and I'm sure y'all have some questions for us. I have some questions tomorrow night for the LGBTQ. Don't run. Don't run now. Don't run now. This is your chance. Nobody's going to call you the F word. Nobody's going to call you the D word. Nobody's going to call you none of that. You will be respected. Yes, it will get emotional at times, but it will never be disrespectful because I will snatch heterosexuals out the conversation. I will snatch LGBTs out the conversation. But here's some questions I have for the LGBTQ that I hope some of you will answer tomorrow. Here are some questions I have.
that I hope some of the LGBTQs will be humble enough to answer on my clubhouse conversation tomorrow night. Five questions I would like to have answered. Question number one, what is the black LGBT political position on pedophilia and the normalization of adult child sexual relations? Because I have not heard y'all speak up and speak out against it yet. What is the black LGBT position on NAMBLA, the North American Association for Man and Boy Love? What is the black LGBT position on the move within white psychiatry to reduce the age of sexual majority for children to 11 or 12? What is your position on that? Because when I hear LGBTQ, when I hear LGBTQ plus LGBTQIA plus, that plus needs to be explained. I need LGBTQ brothers and sisters to come on my clubhouse and tell me what does the plus mean? Because I think the plus means pedophilia. Because I have not heard black LGBTQ oppose pedophilia. If I'm wrong, please correct me tomorrow night. If I'm wrong, please correct me tomorrow night. I have another question for the LGBTQ. I have another question for the LGBTQ. Excuse me, time out. White people, this is not your conversation. Here we go again with the mayonnaise mafia. White people, I know I have white people who follow me. I receive a lot of positive mail from white people. But white people, this is an African family conversation. I need you to see your way out of it right now. This is not for white folks right now. This is not for white folks. My clubhouse platform is only for Africans. We're trying to heal ourselves from what your people have done to us. You know why we got to have a light skin supremacy conversation? Because your ancestors indoctrinated that into our community. You know why we got to have a homosexual conversation? Because your ancestors indoctrinated that into our community. White folks, get off my live right now. Okay? This is not about y'all. I'm not going to disrespect you. Some of you support me. I'm not going to disrespect you. But can you please get the F off my live? I'm having a conversation, a serious conversation with my people. Okay? Another question I have for black LGBT. Another question I have for black LGBT. What is your position on the dangerously high AIDS rate amongst gay black men and why do i not see black lgbt doing anything to educate black men about the risks and the dangers of gay sex i see you promote it i see you protect it but i don't see nothing being done about the tragically high rates of hiv and aids amongst our black male population. I read a report not long ago. I read a report not long ago. I read a report not long ago that said the likelihood of a gay black man contracting the AIDS virus is one in three. And in cities like Atlanta, shout out to Atlanta, shout out to Atlanta, Shout out to Atlanta, one of the top Dr. Umar support cities in the world. But in Atlanta, gay black men have a 50% chance of contracting the AIDS virus. What is being done by the black LGBT community to educate, protect, and heighten awareness amongst gay black men as it relates to the AIDS right? I don't hear y'all saying nothing about it. I have another question. I have another question. 
I have another question. Tomorrow, tonight on Clubhouse, we talking about skin color worship in the black community. Tomorrow on Clubhouse, we talking about the black LGBT political agenda. RBG versus LGBT. Respectfully, RBG versus LGBT tomorrow night. Respectfully, RBG versus LGBT tomorrow. Tonight, we dealing with light skin supremacy, dark skin supremacy, biracial, mixed race supremacy. Listen to me. I have another question I'm going to ask the LGBTs tomorrow. Another question I'm going to ask the LGBTs tomorrow, and that is, what are you doing about pedophilia? What is your position on pedophilia? I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Another question for the LGBTQ. What is your position on transgendered women? Which means there are biologically males. What is the LGBTQ position on transgender women? Which means there are biologically males who date heterosexual males deceptively, deceptively leading straight black men to think that they are biological women. This is a big problem. A lot of people, when y'all talk about violence against transgenders, and I do not support hurt or harm against any human being. I do not support hurt or harm against any human being. I do not support hurt or harm against any human being. But when you talk about violence against transgenders, I need some of you to understand a lot of that violence. I don't accept it. I don't condone it, but a lot of that violence against transgenders is due to the fact that they go out here misrepresenting themselves as biological women. They go out here misrepresenting themselves as biological women. And when the heterosexual black man finds out he was manipulated and deceived, when the heterosexual black man finds out he was manipulated and deceived by the transgender woman, it can lead to violence and worse. What is the LGBTQ political position on transgender women who misrepresent themselves as biological women to straight black men? Can we have a conversation without calling each other names? Can we have a conversation without getting all in our feelings? Because I'm telling you now, if we going to save black America, if we going to save black Africa, if we going to save black Europe, if we going to save black Brazil and black Colombia and black Jamaica and black Haiti and black Turk and Caicos and black Bahamas, if we going to save black Canada and black Australia, brothers and sisters, we got to we got to resolve this. We can agree to disagree, but let us have some principles of understanding. We need mutual points of understanding. Muslims and Christians do not agree on some very serious principles. Muslims and Christians do not agree on some very serious principles, but they do have some principles of respect. We may never see eye to eye. We may never see eye to eye, but let us at least find out what each other stands for, what each other believes in, and let us move forward. Agreeing to disagree, but with respect. Because the LGBTQs were all on my Instagram under my posts talking about how can he lead this conversation as a heterosexual? What kind of question is that? How can he lead this conversation as a heterosexual? So are you telling me that there's an LGBT elitism? 
are the LGBTs. Do y'all think y'all better than everybody else? I mean, every conversation about LGBT got to be facilitated by a LGBT because that's how y'all come off. I have a right to my opinions. I have a right to the discussion. See, what we need you to understand, LGBTQ, black LGBTQ, y'all act like white folks a lot of times when these conversations come up. Y'all act just like white folks a lot of times. Y'all want to kill the conversation. Y'all want to stop heterosexuals from talking about it. You don't want to be questioned about anything you do. And when somebody disagrees with you, they automatically hate you. Stop that bull crap. I'm asking you to man up and woman up. You are not innocent. All of us are victims and all of us are perpetrators. If all of us are victims and all of us are perpetrators, that means black LGBT are just as guilty as everybody else. You are not innocent. Cut it out. You are not innocent. Cut it out. So tonight, nine o'clock, are you too black? Are you too light? Are you not dark enough? Are you too black? Are you too light? Are you not black enough? Does the woke community tolerate light skin supremacy? Does the woke community attack black skin Africans? Does the woke community have a problem with mixed race Africans? Do mixed race Africans think they better? Or are they just like the rest of us? Because I can tell you, having dated mixed race African sisters, having dated, they suffer like hell at the hands of their white families. Mixed race Africans might suffer worse than the rest of us behind closed doors because their white family will say whatever they want to say about black people right in front of their face. As you heard Barack Obama say, but just like a Barack Obama, some mixed race Africans will still align themselves more with white people than black people. Some mixed race Africans will still align themselves more with white people than black people. But to my mixed race Africans, is that a myth? Is it a myth that y'all think y'all white? Is it a myth that y'all don't want to be black? Is it a myth that y'all don't identify as being black? Let's expose it all. I am here to expose the wounds so they can heal. See, when you break a bone, you got to set that bone back correctly or it'll never heal properly. When you have a wound on your body, you got to make sure you dress that wound up properly or it'll never heal. And Dr. Umar is here to say we have not addressed the wounds of light skin, dark skin, biracial supremacy adequately. We have not addressed the wounds of the black LGBT. So we gotta tear the scab off. We gotta tear the scab off and squeeze the pus out. We gotta tear the scab off and squeeze the blood out. We gonna tear the scab off tonight on skin tone prejudice in the black community. We going to tear the scab off tonight. Tomorrow, we tearing the scab off of the LGBT versus the RBG. Can we respect each other and agree to disagree? What do y'all stand for? And then on January the 1st, I have three clubhouses to honor the last three nights of Kwanzaa. I have three clubhouses to honor the last three nights of Kwanzaa. Tonight, Skin Pro Color Prejudice, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, at Dr. Umar Ifatunde on Clubhouse. At Dr. Umar Ifatunde on Clubhouse. At Dr. Umar Ifatunde on Clubhouse. Tonight, we're dealing with skin color prejudice. Tomorrow, we're dealing with LGBT versus RBG. And on New Year's Day, we coming in. New Year's Day, we are talking about building a black power structure for the new year. That's right, brothers and sisters. That's right. 
Saturday Night New Year's is about solutions. Saturday Night New Year's is about solutions. January the 1st at 9 p.m., we are talking about building a black power structure. We know about the white power structure. We know about the Chinese power structure. Where is the black power structure and how do we build it? What are your ideas for economic liberation? What are your ideas for political liberation? What are your ideas for spiritual, academic, black family, black children, educational, gentrification, police genocide? New Year's Day, we dealing with the black power structure. We are having a think tank on New Year's night. We are having a think tank on New Year's night. We are having a think tank on New Year's night, a game-changing strategy session. If you have ideas, bring them to the tables on New Year's Day. We going into 2022 in a RBG blaze. We on fire for black liberation in 2022, brothers and sisters. I said we on fire. Should we start our own black cryptocurrency? Do we need an all black cryptocurrency? Now, I understand we got some brothers and sisters who have started the black cryptocurrency, but you're going to have to break it down for me what you're doing. Dr. Umar needs to understand, overstand and understand the cryptocurrency so I know how it works because I need more education. I'm humble enough to say that I need more education and I want to make sure the black cryptocurrency is being controlled by the black community, not a bunch of talented 10th bourgeoisie Negroes, because I'm willing to sign on to a cryptocurrency. But I'm not going to do that unless I know exactly what's going on with that cryptocurrency and that I have some decision making power over that cryptocurrency. Maybe we need our own Garvey coin. Maybe we need the Garvey coin. Maybe we need the Enchroma dollar. Yes, brothers and sisters. Should we be trying to buy one of these 11 black cities for sale in the United States? Should we be trying to buy one of these 11 black cities for sale? Hell, Michigan only costs $900,000. H-E-L-L, Hell, Michigan, $900,000 for the whole city. Hell, Michigan is one hour from Chicago. Hell, Michigan is one hour from Chicago. Should we go and buy Hell, Michigan, build our own hospital, our own supermarkets, our own schools, our own banks, our own shipping industry, our own distribution network, our own manufacturers, black power structure, not waiting on reparations. That's not a part of this. Nope. We support reparations. We will fight for reparations. It has no place in the conversation on the black power structure because this is a nationalist power structure. This is a do for self power structure. This is about solutions. We need to start selling an all black water. We need to start selling an all black water. Is there anybody out there? Yeah, we got some brothers selling all black water. I need to have a conversation with the all black water family. We're going to have to have a clubhouse chat one day with the all black water family because we got to find out how we can get black water to the entire African world and use some of that money to subsidize the building of Black Wall Street. So New Year's Day is all about solutions. Tonight, we're going to dissect skin color worship. Tomorrow, we're going to dissect RGB, RBG versus LGBT. And then on New Year's Day, it's all about the solutions. Now, let me talk about the conversation we had between continental Africans and American Africans. Good conversation. Very good conversation. But I was very disappointed to learn, I was very disappointed to learn during the conversation between black America and black Africa, I was very disappointed to learn that there are American Africans who are creating clubhouse pages to slander, attack, and denigrate continental Africans. I didn't know that. I didn't know we were calling our continental brothers and sisters defamatory names. I didn't know we were that petty and immature. 
I didn't know that there were continental Africans creating clubhouse pages to denigrate and insult American Africans. I didn't know it was that petty. I simply thought we had political differences. I simply thought that we had political disagreements. I did not know that we have gotten to the point where there's an all out war of disrespect. I didn't know that we've gotten to the point where it's an all out war of disrespe disrespect between American Africans and continental Africans. Now, let me get this right. Most continental Africans and American Africans, we are family. This is a minority issue. It really is a minority issue because I think most continental Africans accept us and I believe most American Africans accept continental Africans. But here's what I want to say to the ADOS and the FBA and the Freedman family. Here's what I want to say to the ADOS and the FBA and the Freedman and the Pretendian family. Here's what I want to say to the ADOS and the Pretendians and the Freedman and the If you don't want to unite with our continental brothers and sisters, if you don't want to unite with our Caribbean brothers and sisters, if you don't want to unite with our European African brothers and sisters, at least don't insult them. Don't call them names. It's no need for that. We can agree to disagree respectfully. It's no need for the name calling. It's no need for the denigrating brothers and sisters. Don't do that. And then I also was told on the back channel, I also was told on the back channel that a lot of the Africans and African-Americans who came on the stage to speak, who act like they was for unity, promote division when they're not with Dr. Umar. I was told that a lot of you guys are hypocrites. I had people back channeling me. They said, Dr. Umar, that sister be insulting people. That brother be insulting Africans. That brother be insulting American Africans. Don't come on my platform and act like you are for unity and understanding when all you want to do is be heard and then you go back to your own little clubhouse and start promoting negativity and disunity. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then on the conversation between black men and black women, I thought that was a good conversation. But I do think black men need to man up. Black men, we need to man up. When my sister from London called in, well, my sister from London called in. Well, my sister from London called in and she sheds a few tears on Clubhouse. As an attorney, she said all the black attorneys look at the women who are not black. She is ready to build a family and can't find a brother in her income black bracket to build a family with because they all want white girls. That's a brothers, black men, we can, black men, we cannot and I will be having an all black man's alpha male conversation. I will be having an all black men's alpha male conversation on Clubhouse because we got to hold each other accountable, brothers. Brothers, we got to have an alpha male accountability session. We got to have an alpha male accountability session, black men, because we keep telling our women to treat us like kings. We keep telling our women to treat us like kings. We keep telling our women to treat us like kings, but we not acting like kings. We got the youth terrorizing the community, killing each other. We not doing a damn thing about it. We got the black youth literally has the whole community in a state of terrorism, killing each other like flies on the wall. Black men ain't doing shit about it. All these unemployed brothers coming out of prison, we ain't doing shit about it. All these unmarried black women, all these fatherless children, we ain't doing shit about it. Police out here beating on our women, we ain't doing shit about it. We got to have an alpha male accountability session. We have gotten comfortable with the white man. Black men have gotten comfortable letting the white man lead our women around. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Black men have gotten so beta. Now, you might not be a beta as an individual brother. But the black male community. The black men, we are beta because we don't control shit. Black men cannot say we are an alpha male community when we don't control and own shit. Barbershops and restaurants are wonderful. Barbershops and restaurants are wonderful. 
Barbershops and restaurants are wonderful, but those are not solutions-oriented institutions. Barbershops and restaurants are wonderful, but those are not solutions institutions. I'm talking schools. I'm talking jobs. I'm talking manufacturing. I'm talking distribution. I'm talking hospitals and supermarkets. Come on, man. You want to be treated like a king, but you ain't got no kingdom. We want to be treated like kings, but we ain't got no kingdom. Black man, we got to do something. I believe black women want to honor us. I believe black women even want to worship us. But they can't worship weakness. They can't honor weakness. We want black women to submit to our masculinity. They can't do that when we're not holding them down. Come on, brothers. Let's stop being superficial with the manhood. Let's get down to it. Manhood is responsibility. We have not been responsible. Brothers and sisters, hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG academy. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG academy. Check some money orders, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, one nine eight. Zero nine. I will see you in New York City, January 12th, Dr. Khaled Abdul-Muhammad birthday celebration. I will see you in New York City, January the 12th, Dr. Khaled Abdul-Muhammad birthday celebration. I will see you in New York City, January the 12th, Dr. Khaled Abdul-Muhammad birthday celebration. I will see you in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Dr. King birthday conference at the Minneapolis Convention Center. I will see you in Minneapolis, Minnesota on Saturday, January the 15th, Dr. King's natural birthday conference at the Minneapolis Convention Center. Black Parent Advocate book release. I will see you in St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Black Bookstore. Sunday, January the 16th. Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. Crispus Attucks Museum. Monday, January 17th. Dr. King Holiday. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, January the 26th. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, January the 26th. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, January the 26th. DeSoto, Texas, January 29. DeSoto, Texas, January 29. DeSoto, Texas, January 29. Shreveport, Louisiana, January 30. Shreveport, Louisiana, January 30. Shreveport, Louisiana, January 30. If you need to reach me by text, 215-989-9858. You want to reach me by text, 215-989-9858. You want to reach me by text, 215-989-9858. Let's go into the new year the right way. Let's go into the new year the right way. Let's go into the new year the right way. Personal donations by way of Zelle. Use my cell number. Personal donations by way of Zelle. Use my cell number 215-989-9858. Personal donations by way of Zelle. Use my cell number. School donations cannot be sent via Zelle. FDMG does not have a Zelle account. Only personal donations via Zelle. Personal donations via Cash App. Dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. Dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. Parents, if you need any consultations regarding your child life coaching, reach out to Dr. Umar Ifatunde. Pray for FDMG. We want to get this school ready in time for the Saturday, September the 10th, 2022 block party. We want to have FDMG ready with a full grand opening in conference on Saturday, September the, September the 10th, 2022. Let me say this as I close out and I will see you all tonight on Clubhouse. As I close out, and I will see you all tonight, 9 o'clock, Shark Clubhouse, to talk about skin color prejudice in the black community. There's a lot of clubhouse groups being formed to try to destroy me. From what I understand, the ADOS and the Pretendians and the Freedmen and some self-hating continental African groups are creating groups to try to attack the Prince of Pan-Africanism and Team pan African the International Movement for the Independence and Protection of African People. It won't work. It didn't work for Garvey. It didn't work for Lumumba. It didn't work for Nkrumah. It didn't work for Sabukwe. It didn't work for Malcolm. It's not going to work for me. Okay? All your little petty platforms put together. All your little petty platforms put together does not even begin to approach the grandeur and the majesty and the power and the strength of the Ifa Tunde universe. See, that's why I'm working on my app right now. I'm working on my app. I'll be on Clubhouse and Fanbase until my app is ready.
I'll be on Clubhouse and Fanbase until my app is ready. But as soon as the EFI Tune Day Universe app is ready, you're going to have to subscribe. $9.99 a month for exclusive lives, exclu exclusive chats, exclusive conversations, exclusive videos, exclusive updates, exclusive events for all those who belong to the EFI Tune Day Universe. So I'm not worrying about the Clubhouse haters. I'm not worrying about the YouTubians. If I survive YouTube, I'll survive Clubhouse. I'll survive Instagram, I'll survive Clubhouse. I survive Twitter, I'll survive, I'll survive Clubhouse. You need to understand something. If you want the throne, you gotta take it. If you want the belt, you gotta take it. If you want to be the king of black consciousness, you can, but you got to go through me. And right now, there might be some number one contenders, there might be some number two contenders, but right now, I'm the king of the ring. I'm the king called consciousness. I'm the number one. And I'm the realest one. I'm not a fake. I am not a phony. I am not a hustler. I am not a YouTubian. I am not an intellectual masturbator. My life is dedicated fully, totally, exclusively for the liberation of African people. Over there, over here, and everywhere. This is the Prince. If you need to reach me, 215-989-9858. Peace and Pan-Africanism. I'll see y'all tonight on Clubhouse. One love.